Now let's go back to our scripture reading. Tuenende kwa andiko letu tusome. The book of Genesis chapter 1. Mwanzo sura ya kwanza. Verse 25 all the way to 28. Kwanza uh, 28. Verse 25 to 28. Paka 28. Right. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Mungu akafanya mnyama wa mwitu kwa chinzi zake na mnyama wa kufungwa kwa chinzi zake na kila kitu kitambaacho juu ya nji kwa chinzi yake Mungu akaona ya kuwa ni vema Then God said let us make man in our image According to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth Mungu akasema na tumfanye mtu kwa mfano wetu kwa sura yetu wakatawale samaki wa baharini na ndeke wa angani na wanyama na nji yote pia na kila chenye kutambaa kitambaacho juu ya nji So God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them Mungu akaumba mtu kwa mfano wake kwa mfano wa Mungu alimuumba mwanamume na mwanamke aliwaumba Then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth Mungu akawabariki akawabarikia Mungu akawaambia zaeni mkaongezeke mkaijaze nji na kuitisha mkawatawale samaki wa baharini na ndeke wa angani na kila kiumbe chenye uhai kiendajo juu ya nji. Lord we are grateful this morning. Bwana tunashukurani asubuhi ya leo. For the word of your grace. Kwa neno la neema yako. That the seed of the word shall be planted in our hearts. Ya kwamba mbeku ya neno lako itapandwa mioyoni mwetu. And our hearts shall be fertile ground. Na mioyo yetu itakuwa ya rotuba. Upon which there shall be budding of your fruit. Ambako kutazalisha matunda to the glory of your holy name in jesus name amen amen now uh, we we learned yesterday that god's purpose for man is that he should establish a kingdom on the earth so he was not starting a religion He was starting a government. Alianza ufalme. We said that the heavens belong to the Lord our God. Tukasema mbingu ni ya Mwenyezi Mungu. But the earth he has given to man. Lakini nchi amepatia mwanadamu. His purpose is to extend his kingdom on the earth. Kusudi lake ni kuendeleza ufalme wake katika nchi. And the authority that man exercises na mamlaka yenye mwanadamu anafanya kazi is delegated authority ni mamlaka yenye amepeanwa that's why god says let them ndiposa biblia mungu anasema wacha wao the word let them means granting permission neno hilo akawaambia ni kuwapa fursa ama nafasi so when god was giving a command to to men wakati Mungu alipatiana amri kwa mtu He didn't tell them to establish a ritualistic organization. Hakusema endeleza desturi fulani. He didn't give them a set of rules and regulations. Hakuwapa sheria fulani na masharti. He gave them authority of governance. Aliwapa mamlaka ya kutawala. He told them uh, multiply. Aliwaambia zaeni. Says fill the earth akawaambia ijaze nchi says have dominion akawaambia mtawale says subdue it akawaambia mkaweze kutisha so the purpose of god was that man would have dominion kusudi la mungu ni ya kwamba mwanadamu akuwe na mamlaka and we ha- we learn that dom- in dominion there is a domain na tukakundua ya kwamba katika ku- ku- uh, mamlaka kuna sehemu ama mahali and that domain is the territory of authority mahali pale ni 
sehemu ya mamlaka. In legislative language is called jurisdiction. Katika hali ya kisheria ni sehemu fulani ya utawala. It means you have jurisdiction over this area. Una nguvu ama mamlaka juu ya You are licensed or you have authority to exercise or power to exercise over this area. Una nguvu ama uhalali wa kutawala mahali pale. Or you have authority over this matter. Una nguvu ama mamlaka juu ya So the dominion ilo. of man was the earth. Sasa mam, uh, kutawala kwa mwanadamu ilikuwa nchi but he was supposed to exercise that authority on behalf of god na ilikuwa afanye kazi kwa mamlaka yale kwa niaba ya mwenyezi we also learned that the word man here is plural tunakundua ya kwamba neno mtu hapa ni neno la wingi and it is not gender sensitive na sio ya kichinzia because man is the totality of god's creation kwa sababu mtu ni mjazo wa uumbaji wa Mungu. So God was to exercise his authority on the earth through man. Sasa Mungu ilikuwa afanye kazi ya utawala hapa injini kupitia mwanadamu. And we read Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Na tukasoma Isaya sura ya 9 mstari wa 6. That a son ya kwamba mwana shall be given. Amepeanwa. A child is born. Mtoto amezaliwa. And the government will be upon his shoulder. Na serikali itakuwa mabaikani mwake and verse 7 we say and of the increase of his government there Na shall be no end mstari wa 7 inasema usidishaji wa serikali yake haitakuwa na kikomo says upon the throne of david anasema katika kiti cha enzi cha and daudu. over his kingdom na kwa ufalme wake wote to order it akaweze kuyelekeza and to establish it with judgment and justice na kuizimika kwa hukumu na haki from that time forward tangia wakati ule ever forever it means god is establishing an everlasting kingdom so what we see in scripture the original purpose of god was that he was going to raise kings it is a household of kings that is why he is known as the king of kings because he has established us as kings we saw in revelation 5 verse 9 that there is a song in heaven worthy is the lamb that was slain kuna wimbo mbinguni ambao unaimbwa anastahili mwana kondoo aliyechinjwa and that has redeemed us from by his blood na ametukomboa kwa damu yake from every kindred and tribe and nation kutoka katika kila kabila na taifa Lord. and has made us kings and priests na ametufanya makuhani na wafalme so god is building a family of kings sasa mungu anajenga jamii ya wafalme people who are going to rule together with him watu ambao watatawala pamoja naye so that in revelation chapter 1 verse 6 liposa ufunuo moja sita that he has made us unto his father god ya kwamba ametufanya sisi kwa baba yake as kings and priests so that we can be able to rule together with him in fact Ephesians 2:6 talks to us and he say that our position is that we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus ya kwamba nafasi yetu tumeketi pamoja na na Kristo Uh, na Mungu. So our dwelling place is not here on earth. Our physical presence might be here. Uhalisi wetu tunaweza kuwa hapa. But our spiritual reality is that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. Lakini kiroho uhalisi wake tumeketi pamoja na Kristo. So he has called us to be kings. Sasa ametuita sisi tuwe wafalme. It is a government he wants to establish. Ni ufalme ama serikali anataka kuimarisha. And the preoccupation of Jesus na kazi ya Bwana Yesu was about preaching the kingdom. Ilikuwa kuhubiri kuhusu ufalme. Everywhere he went. Popote alipoenda. He was preaching about the kingdom. Alihubiri 
mfalme. Says repent for the kingdom of God is near. Anasema tubuni ufalme wa Mungu And we looked at all those scriptures yesterday. Na tukatazama maandiko yale jana. We also saw how Nicodemus went to Jesus. Na tukaona vile Nicodemo alienda kwa Bwana Yesu. And had a question to Jesus. Na alikuwa na swala kwa Yesu. But Jesus used that opportunity lakini Yesu alitumia fursa ile to give him some teaching na akamfunza says rabbi akasema mwalimu we, we know that you are from god tunajua wewe watoka kwa mungu for none can do the signs that you do kwa sababu hakuna yeyote anayeweza tenda matendo John chapter 3 verse 2 except god be with him yohana 3:2 Uh, kama Mungu hayupo na yeye. And Rabbi said, Na huyo mwalimu akasema, Assuredly I say to you no one can see the kingdom unless he's born again. Kwa kweli nakuambia hakuna yeyote anayeweza ona ufalme So we saw that salvation ako. opens your eyes to see the kingdom. Tukaona ya kwamba wokofu unafungua macho yako kuona ufalme. And then he says unless one is born of the water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom. Na akasema kama hakuna yeyote ambaye anazaliwa kwa Majina roho hawezi ona ufalme. So the word, the spirit gives you access to the kingdom. Sasa roho inakupa njia ya kuingia katika ufalme. And Nicodemus was worried wondering how that is going to happen. Na Nicodemus alikuwa na shaka hii itatendekana. Says can one go back to his mother's womb and be born? Akasema nje mtu ana, mkubwa anaweza ingia tena tumboni mwa mamake na azaliwe. And Jesus said uh, Marvel not that I say to you you must be born again. Yesu Kristo akamwambia usistajabu nimekwambia uzaliwe mara ya pili. For whatever is born of flesh is flesh. Kwa sababu chenye kimezaliwa na mwili ni mwili. But whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Lakini chenye kimezaliwa na roho ni roho. It says for the wind bloweth anasema kwa sababu upepo wa pepea where it wishes penye unataka you hear the sound thereof unasikia sauti yake but you know it's not whether it cometh and where it goes lakini haujui inatoka wapi wala inaelekea so is wapi. everyone that is born of the spirit sasa ni vivo hivyo yoyote ambaye amezaliwa meaning kwa when you are born of the spirit kumaanisha ukizaliwa na roho you have entered into another realm umeingia sehemu tofauti that this realm cannot understand you sehemu ambayo ulimwengu hawezi they see the effects of your life wanaona matunda ya maisha yako and the impact of your life na udhuru wa maisha yako but they cannot understand the substance of your life lakini hawezi elewa wewe ni chinzi ya gani today we want to talk about the kingdom citizenship tunataka leo kuongea kuhusu wenyeji wenyeji wa ufalme because you cannot exercise yourself in the kingdom kwa sababu hauwezi kuendeleza katika ufalme before you become a resident of that kingdom mpaka ukue mwenyeji wa ufalme the bible says there is a city whose builder and founder is god biblia inasema kuna mji mchoraji na mwenye kujenga ni mungu there are certain privileges kuna nafasi fulani and certain rights na haki fulani that are only given to the citizens ambazo zapewa tu wenyeji you realize even in this country unakundua hata katika nchi hii if you are seeking for a leadership position kama wewe unataka kuwa kiongozi that, that is an elective position hiyo ni kupikiwa kura you must fulfill certain requirements of the constitution ni lazima utii sheria fulani one of which is that you must be a citizen na moja wapo ni lazima ukue mwenyeji that mwenye. means you must be part of this nation ni lazima ukue sehemu ya taifa hili to seek to lead it ili kutafuta nafasi ya you cannot exercise authority over a nation hawezi kuwa na mamlaka juu ya taifa or exercise delegated authority ama kuweza kufanya kazi uh, mamlaka ambayo umepewa unless you are you have a relationship with that authority mpaka ukue na uhusiano na mamlaka yale every ambassador in this country from us for instance uh, kila ambassador kama yule wa marekani hapa injini he serves under the pleasure of his president yeye anafanya kazi kulingana na rais mwenye mtuma that means he is a mouthpiece of his president inamaanisha yeye ni kinywa cha rais wake and the authority he exercises na mamlaka ambaye anaifanya kazi is not his own authority sio yake but delegated authority lakini ni yenye amepeanwa but for him to be sent to represent his nation 
lakini kama utatumwa kuwakilisha taifa hili must be a citizen of that nation ni lazima ukue mwenyeji wa hiyo taifa you cannot be a foreigner and represent a foreign nation na hawezi kuwa mgeni na ukaweze kuwakilisha so, taifa the same geni. the same applies to the kingdom sasa ni hivyo hivyo inahusika katika ufalme you must be a citizen of the nation lazima ukue mwenyeji you must be uh, initiated into the kingdom lazima ukaingie katika ufalme before you start exercising kingship or authority kabla ya wewe kuanza kufanyiza kazi mamlaka ama nguvu and the exercise of the initiation into the kingdom of god na kuweza kuingia katika ufalme does not just come to the keeping of certain rules and regulations haiji kwa kuweka masharti fulani na sheria the bible declares that we are born of the spirit biblia inasema tumezaliwa kwa roho Only the spirit gives birth to us into the kingdom. Ni roho mwenye anatuzalisha katika ufalme. There are so many people who are members of churches. Kuna watu wengi ambao ni washirika wa kanisa. But are not members of the household of faith. Lakini wao sio washiriki wa nyumba ya imani. You must be born into the family of God. Inabidi uzaliwe katika and initiated into the family of God before you are accepted to exercise authority over it and that does not just mean that you have heritage in the world na hiyo haimaanishi ya kwamba wewe una urithi tu hapa duniani by virtue that maybe your relative was in church ama kwa sababu mtu wa jamii yako ni mtu wa It the spirit of God that gives birth to us into the realm of the spirit that's why scripture says whatever is born of flesh is flesh and whatever is born of spirit is spirit so if you are born of the flesh you cannot operate in the spirit tenda kazi kwa kiroho only spirit beings ni watu ambao ni kiroho operate in the spirit world ambao wanafanya kazi kwa kiroho so you must be born into the spirit lazima uzaliwe kiroho and that birth na uzalishaji ule comes from the birth of the spirit inatokana na kuzalishwa kwa roho you know the first man unaona mtu wa adam adam was put in a deep sleep yeye was put in a deep sleep alipewa usingizi mnono and then a rib was taken out of him na sehemu yake ya ubafu ikachukuliwa he created a wife for him na mungu akamtengenezea mwanamke the second adam jesus mtu wa pili yesu was put in a deep sleep yeye aliwekwa kwa usingizi and a rib was taken out of him na pia ubafu katoa and made a wife called the church na mungu akatengeneza mke ambaye ni kanisa bath was by the spirit kuzaliwa kule ni kwa roho because whatever is born of the flesh is flesh but whatever is born of the spirit is the spirit that's why he says you must be born of the water and the spirit for you to enter into the kingdom meaning for you to be enlisted as a kingdom citizen Uh, kumaanisha kama wewe utawekwa kwa mwenyeji wa ufalme there must be a transformation by the spirit inabidi kukue na ku, ku, kuishwa that's why second corinthians 5:17 says you are a new creation ndipo sa wa, wa korintho wa pili sura ya 5 17 inasema nyinyi ni uzao mpya salvation is not a self improvement program Uokofu sio kujibadilisha hali. It is not additions. Sio mambo ya uongezaji. It is not self motivation. Sio kuweza kutiwa moyo. Salvation is a new birth. Uokofu ni kuzaliwa tena. That if you are looking for a former man you don't get him. Kama utaangalia mtu wa kikale hautampata. It is not addition of religion. Sio kuongeza dini kwa maisha. It's a complete total change. Ni ubadilisho tofauti. In fact is the dying of one inamaanisha kukufa moja and the giving birth of another. Na kuzalisha ya pili ama The birth pain comes so that you can deliver a baby. 
uchungu wa kuzaa unakuja ndiposa kukuwe na kuzalisha mwana. And kingdom citizens wa ufalme are delivered by the spirit. Wao wamezalishwa na roho. Let me tell you why the spirit is very important. Wacha niwaambie kwa nini roho ni wa muhimu. Because you can sit in church forever. Kwa sababu waweza keti kanisani milele. And yet not born in the spirit. Lakini haujazaliwa kiroho. Because your desires are of the flesh. Kwa sababu matamanio yako ni ya kimwili. Your intentions are of the flesh. Makusudio yako one thing that the spirit does to us the spirit of god is the seal of ownership roho wa mungu ni mhuri wa kurithi vitu it is the spirit of god that confirms that we belong to god ni roho wa mungu ambaye anahakikisha sisi tuna ni wa mungu ephesians 1:13 He tells us that by the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed on the, uh, the, the but you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Inasema ya kwamba tuliwekwa mhuri na roho wa That means ahadi. when you are born into the family of God. Inamaanisha wakati umezaliwa katika jamii ya Mwenyezi. There is a seal of the Holy Spirit placed upon your life. Kuna mhuri wa roho mtakatifu umewekwa katika jamii. This guy belongs to me. Ya kwamba wewe ni wa Mwenyezi. Or that you are admitted to this kingdom. Ama wewe umewekwa sasa katika ukali. Now you can exercise authority on our behalf. Sasa unaweza fanyia kazi mamlaka kwa niaba ya mbingu Ephesians 4 verse 30 Wa Efeso 4:30 Grieve not ye the Holy Spirit Inasema msihusunishe roho wa Mungu By whom you are sealed for the day of your redemption Ambaye mlipewa wakati wa uh, The seal of God upon your life The seal of God kwa maisha yako is by the spirit ni kwa roho wa Mungu you are sealed by the holy spirit uliwekwa mhuri na roho wa Mungu on the day of your redemption wakati ulikombolewa you see without that seal Wak, uh, unaona kama hakuna kule it means mhuri. you are not permitted to transact kingdom business ina maanisha wewe ha, hauko na uhalali wa kufanya mambo katika ufalme we learned yesterday that you cannot transact unless you are a son na tuliona jana ya kwamba hauwezi kufanya mambo kama wewe si There are certain things you don't just receive by prayer. Kuna mambo fulani hauwezi pokea tu kwa sababu unaomba. You receive by heritage. Unapokea kwa kurithi. There are certain things we access because we are just citizens. Tuna mambo fulani ambayo tunapata kwa sababu It is the responsibility of the government to provide. Ni serikali ni kazi ya serikali So if you have the seal of ownership kama wewe una muhuri wa kumiliki it means jesus has declared inamaanisha yesu amekutangaza that this guy belongs to me ya kwamba wewe ni wake and therefore everything that the covenant uh, delivers uh, kila kitu ambacho serikali inatoa he can access it wewe una nafasi ya kulima. because of the seal of the holy spirit kwa sababu ya muhuri wa roho mtakatifu the holy spirit roho mtakatifu gives you access anakupa as a citizen of the kingdom kama mwenyeji wa ufalme and we said you cannot transact the business of the kingdom na tulisema hauwezi kufanya mambo ya ufalme as a foreigner kama mgeni you only transact the business of ambas- um, an ambassador wewe unafanya kazi ya ambassador through delegated authority kulingana na mamlaka ambayo umepewa there are certain leadership position we have said kuna mambo fulani ya u- 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 uongozi ambao tumesema you cannot access unless you are a citizen hauwezi yenda kwake kama wewe sio mwenyeji you remember the sons of skeva je unakundua wana wa skeva they tried to get the strange authority walitaka kupokea mamlaka ya kigeni and the demons took out the register na mapepo yakatoa register they say we are seeing that nations the bureau na wanasema tunaona vile imeandikwa hapa. Say we can see Jesus. Tunaweza ona Yesu. Because he's our older brother. Kwa sababu yeye ni We can see wajibu. Paul. Tunaweza ona Paulo. Where, where are you? Lakini nyinyi kwa hiyo orodha mko wapi? Eh. Yeah. The Bible says they entered the house when they were well dressed. Eh? Yeah? Biblia inasema waliingia kwa nyumba wamefaa vema. By the time they were coming out. Lakini walipokuwa wanatoka nje. They say they were totally beaten. Wali pikwa kabisa 
They say, and there were sons of a certain priest. Na walikuwa wana wakuhani flani. So there were sons of a bishop. <laughs> eh? But they were thinking, we've seen our father do like this. <laughs> Let's also try it. <laughs> you know, it reminds me the other day, my, uh, my son is, um, is getting involved in a wedding this coming Saturday. So we bought him a, a coat. Eh? Uh, a suit. So when he had put in, he was trying it. Eh? So immediately he put it. I saw him tell the friend, the, the brothers. Says, now we have become reverends. <laughs> <laughs> we have now become reverends. <laughs> you know, to him, he thinks reverend is, is a suit. <laughs> no! The demons do not listen to your title. The demons do not listen to your volume. They don't even listen to your vocabulary. Are you a citizen of the kingdom? Are you authorized to exercise on behalf of the government? If not, you are a stranger. So the Holy Spirit is the seal Ephesians 1.30 says the, the spirit of promise. Ephesians 4.30 says you are sealed on the day of your redemption. The Holy Spirit is also able to open to us the communication lines. There is no way you can exercise authority in the kingdom you cannot exercise authority without a form of communication to do you are delegating authority. You must always be in contact to your sending authority. You guys saw the other day what we call Wikileaks, isn't it? Wikileaks. You, you know Wikileaks? Huh? Tuliona juzi juzi kusu Wikileaks. Uh, th those, those guys are tapping into the communication of the ambassadors and their countries. Wale watu ambao wanaingilia mawasiliano ya wenye wanawakilisha katika nji tofauti. And you'd notice Na utakundua that these people are always talking to their delegating authority. Uh, did you read some things about Kenya? The, the ambassador is always talking to the president in the US. What surprised me is that we might think ambassador is a very high position. And that the president is a very high position. So they don't talk about these mundane things. But in the Wikileaks we read that ambassador reports everything. He says even this opposition leader is very moody sometimes. Anasema hata huyu kiongozi wa upinzani anahisia sana. This Kalonzo cannot make up his mind. Huyu Kalonzo hawezi fanya akili yake. When they were reporting even about Russia they were saying this guy likes uh, likes pepper. wakati walisema kuhusu Russia wanasema huyu anapenda pilipili. Even if you like just PK they they will rep they report to the imagine. Hata kama imagine, <laughs> imagine the president seated at the other end. Asking, uh, asking how many times does that guy eat? I mean, he reports about everything. Meaning as a kingdom ambassador, 
kama wewe ni ambassador wa ufalme our god needs to know everything mungu anataka ajue not just all those big things you think sio vitu kubwa tu zenye wewe but what allows us to be in communication is the spirit lakini chenye kinaturuhusu tukue kwa mawasiliano ni roho romans 8:26 warumi for we do not know what to pray for as we ought but the spirit tells us in our infirmities for he maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered for he that searches the hearts understands the mind of the spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. It is the spirit that knows what we need to pray for. So it is impossible to have effective prayer in your flesh. That is why then prayer is not just hard work like we are working hard in our flesh. Prayer now becomes just me showing up so that the spirit can pray inside of me. I have veil a vessel for the Holy Spirit to grow within. He maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. It's not only that. He says he was telling the Samaritan woman John chapter 4 uh, verse uh, 24 that without, without the spirit you cannot be a true worshiper. You cannot try in your own intellect. You know by nature we said we are selfish people. We always want to ask about us. And even we have developed what we call the prayer items. Prayer Mm. and then we come to church to receive let's go and receive but you see worship is meant to give when children of Israel used to go to Shiloh they were not going to receive. Everybody had carried something to go and give. You can never be an effective worshiper unless you have a disposition of giving. Because it's not receiving, it's giving. Giving my life, giving what I have, giving who I am giving to God. So the spirit of God we have said is the seal upon our lives to show that we are legitimate citizens of the kingdom. The spirit of God opens our communication to God. Now it gives us opportunity he says in fact Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 Anasema now we can have boldness to enter into his presence. Why? Because whatever is born of flesh is flesh and whatever is born of spirit is spirit. He says God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship him in spirit. That would mean God does not accept any worship of the flesh. So let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Huh? He's saying, seeing we have such a high priest, let's go back to 14, seeing we have such a high priest, we do not lose hope. Huh? 
Seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. So that gives us access access to God. It is impossible to be an ambassador in a foreign land yet be out of touch with your delegating authority. In fact, if you want to know now you are not in good terms, is when you start seeing communication is not flowing through. Any ambassador does not receive news from the, the delegating authority often. Kila ambasada mwenye hapokei mawasiliano kila mara. Is, a, is worried about his relationship. Yeye anajali sana usiano wake. Did you know sometimes certain governments, if they want to do away with you, they just cut communication. Unajua kama nchi fulani itataka ikuondoe inakunyamazia. They give you what we call the blackout. Inakunyamazia. So that you, you do not know what is happening. Sasa hautambui ni nini kinaendelea. And when you stop communication. Na ukiweza kunyamazisha uwasiliano. And your ambassadorial duties are cut off. Na kazi yako ya uambasada ina. You, you are recalled immediately. Mm, you don't continue staying there. So you don't go to the mission field saying I'm representing an authority when you don't have the communication. You cannot exercise authority in the kingdom without proper confirmation of your citizenship. The Spirit of God also teaches us. Teaches us. John 14, 26, he says, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all the things that I've said to you. We are taught of the Lord. We can mention certain things to you but only the Spirit can teach you. We can mention so many keys to you but you can only catch it in the Spirit. If you don't catch it by the Spirit you will not have it. It's the spirit that brings to remembrance all the things that he has we have learned and all the things that he has taught us without whom we cannot remember. Uh, in fact, in the New Covenant, the Bible says that each one of you will be taught of the Lord. There's a difference between the teaching of men and the teaching of the Spirit. The Spirit of God can teach you. But only when you are a proper citizen, you walk not after the flesh, you walk after the Spirit. I want us to read Acts 18 verse 25. Acts 18 verse 25. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit. He spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. Though he knew only the baptism of John. You know one of the problems of the church today is that we are suffering from information overload. We have too much information. 
nyingi. But we are not acting on it. Lakini hatuitendei kazi. This guy only knew the baptism of who? Huyu mtu alikuwa anajua tu. And the Bible says he was fervent in the spirit. Lakini Biblia inasema alikuwa hodari katika roho. And instructed in the way of the Lord. Na alikuwa ametiisha. So that is what he practiced. And that is what he taught. I wish you just practice what you already know. <laughs> the Bible says the Russians are as bold as the lion. <laughs> but the wicked jump over nothing, isn't it? Wow, yeah. You know what is scaring you is not the sound. It's already some fear inside of you already, so yeah, it's just confirming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> and this week you've been telling people, you know I'm bold. Na juma hili unaambia watu wewe ni una ni hodari. Very bold. Hauna uoga. I wish you just practice what you knew. Laiti ungeweza kufanyia kazi hiyo yenye unajua. Say be doers of the word. Na Biblia inasema kuwa watenda kazi wa neno. Not hear as only deceiving yourself. Sio wasikizaji wenye wanajipumbaza. Today we have so many meetings about evangelism. And we gather people to train them about evangelism. And we teach them about how the kinds of fish. And the methods of fishing. And the type of tools used for fishing. And the categories of fishermen. Wa, wa and we establish an institution to teach about people who are going to teach others about fishing. Na pia tunakuwa na mahali penye tutafunza watu wenye watafunza watu kuhusu. And then they graduate on fisheries. Na wana itim kwa kuvua uh, kuhusu kufunza kuvua. And then they are called by other institution and churches also to teach about fishing. Na wanaitwa na makanisa na mahali kwingine pia kufunza kuhusu kuvua. And establish an exchange program like we have about fishing. <laughs> <laughs> and then they share con- on a conference about how the fishing and how their lessons are. Na wanashiriki kwa kongamano kuhusu kuvua ni nini na file ipo. The problem is that no one is fishing. Na shida ni ya kwamba hakuna yeyote mwenye anavua. So you don't need a lot of information about fishing. Sasa hauhitaji maarifa nyingi kuhusu kuvua. The Samaritan woman did not sit on a class. Yule mwanamke msamaria hakuketi darasani. When he met Jesus, wakati alikutana na Yesu, she just went back and said come and see the man. Wa alienda tu Alafu akaita watu akasema njo mkaone huyu mtu. Ask your neighbor how many lessons do you need to learn come and see the man. Uliza jirani yako ni maarifa gani yenye ama lesson gani unataka ufunze. Come and see the man. Kuja ona mtu. The blind man had not attended. Yule kipofu. In fact he didn't know who Jesus was. Hakujua Yesu ni nani. But we are saying for you to fish you must be deep you must be deep in God. Tunasema ya kwamba kama utavua ni lazima ukue kilindini. You must have experience. Lazima ukue na uchuzi. His message was simple. Ujumbe ilikuwa rahisi. I don't know him. Simjui. But what I know. Lakini chenye najua. I was blind. Nilikuwa kipofu. But now I see. Lakini sasa naona. The religious folk with PhDs was asking that guy is a sinner. Na wale wa kidini wenye wana shahada kubwa walikuwa wanauliza. We have analyzed him. Wanasema tumemchunguza huyu mtu. We have looked at his homiletics. Tumeangalia kazi yake ya analyze his background. Tumeangalia unyuma wake. His exegical you know proclivity is not very well. Tukiangalia vile anachunguza maandiko yeye. In fact he has um, some eschatological problems. Ana shida fulani kuhusu 
his pneumatology is is not straight hizo hizo zote aziko sawa so we have concluded to me itimisha that he is a sinner yeye ni mtenda dhambi he says i don't know about that mimi sijui hiyo but what i know lakini chenye najua that sinner I was blind but now I see. That's the message of the gospel. But our PhDs and our theology is an obstacle to the gospel. And the church is hungry for more. Give us more. Give us 12 points. Tupatie point 12. Eight is not enough. And you asked him what about last Sunday? Na unauliza je chumapili iliyopita? I can't remember. Sikumbuki. I want more. Nataka zaidi. Wow. The spirit of God gives us boldness. Roho wa Mungu anatupa ujaziri. Boldness does not come from your intellect. Some people think if I grow bigger. With this big body. Then I confess everyone. Ah uh, ah. Uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, uh. It is your size inside. The inner man. Yule mtu wa ndani that causes you to change ambaye atakusababisha wewe kubadilika so if you want boldness kama unataka ujaziri acts 431 matendo ya mitume say they were praying somewhere inasema walikuwa wakiomba mahali and place where they were shook na mahali penye wao walikuwa kukaa and they were filled with the holy spirit wakajazwa na roho mtakatifu and they spoke the word of god with boldness wakanena neno la mungu na ujaziri they prayed waliomba those are overwhelming presence of god walikuwa weponi wa mungu and the physical structure shook na jengo was physical at that time shook chenye kilikuwa kiasili hapo kikatetemeka the church nowadays prays until they shake kanisa saa hizi inaomba mpaka wenyewe wanatetemeka nothing shakes around them hakuna chenye kinatetemeka karibu na wao ni wao tu the bible says they were filled with the spirit Biblia inasema walijazwa na roho. And they start to speak the word of God with boldness. Wakanena neno la Mungu na ujazi. Remember these are the same boys that were walking with Jesus. <laughs> Kumbuka hawa ni wa jamaa wenye walikuwa wakitembea na Yesu. Remember Thomas was here. Unakumbuka Thomas alikuwa Remember Peter pana. Peter was denying Jesus. Petero mwenye alimkanda Yesu. Matthew 26:65. Uh, Mathayo 26:65. Mark 14:59. Mariko 15:49. Luke 22:25. Luka 22:25. John 18 from verse 22. Yohana 18:25. These are this this is the same one who was saying I don't know that man. Huyu ni mjamaa mwenye alisema mimi si. But now when they were endowed with the power from on high. Lakini wakati alijazwa roho kutoka juu. And the Bible says they were just fishermen. Na Biblia inasema walikuwa wavuvi tu. They were just fishermen. Walikuwa wavuvi. They didn't know much. Hawakujua zaidi. But they spoke the word of God with boldness. Lakini walise walinena neno la Mungu. Standing before the governors and the leaders and the Sanhedrin of those those days. Wakisimama mbele ya wafalme na wakuu maakida. And Jesus had told them Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Na Yesu Kristo akawaambia matendo ya mitume 1:8 that you shall receive power after this the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Ya kwamba mtapokea nguvu wakati roho akija juu yenu na mtakuwa mashahidi wangu. Because Jesus knew they were not able to do this without the spirit. Kwa sababu Yesu alijua hawataweza kutekeleza haya. The spirit of God is what gives you boldness. Ni roho wa Mungu ambaye anakutia ujaziri. Don't think that if I just added one more class I'll be bold. Usifikirie kwamba ukiongeza class moja utakuwa hodari. If I attend just one more seminar I'll be bold. Nikienda seminar moja nitakuwa mchaziri. No tarry until you are bathed by the spirit. 
ebu kuwa mpaka uzalishwe na roho and then you are able to face any man na unaweza kabiliana na mtu yoyote so the kingdom of god comes comes from the birth of the spirit sasa mfalme wa mungu unatokana na kuzalishwa na roho Uh, but the problem today we have filled the church with professionals. Lakini shida ya leo tumejaza kanisa na watu wa you know professionals. Professionals. Taaluma fulani. Who have the system of the world. Wenye wana desturi fulani za kidunia. He is still a manager in church. Ah mimi pia ni kiongozi manager kanisani. So he comes, eh? Sasa anakuja. Say so lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Ainua mikono yako msifu Bwana. You know the cultured men and women. Unajua watu wenye wana desturi fulani. Getting to some rank and level in the system of the world. Yeye ako nafasi kuu sana katika ulimwengu. Says don't be crazy. Anasema hawezi Don't be crazy. Usikuwe na kichaa. Be a gentleman. Kuwa uh Mungwana. Be a gentleman. Kwa mungwana. Worship God as a gentleman. E, abudu Mungu kiungwana. Mm. So, but you know the people who are crying in church and wailing, those are desperate people have little little problems here and there. You know? Unaona watu wenye wanalia kanisani ni watu wenye wana shida ndogo ndogo hapa na pale. Yes, but for you? Lakini kwako wewe? Mhm. Uh-uh. But you see, lakini unaona the problem is not that uh, you are not equipped shida sio ati hauna maarifa or that you don't have the necessary training ama haujapitia mafunzo the problem is that you are not drunk enough shida ni ya kwamba haujalewa says do not be drunk with wine biblia inasema usilewe kwa mfinyo whereby there is debauchery ambako kuna but be filled with the Holy, with the spirit lakini jazwa na roho that's why we sit in a matatu and how am i going to begin na ndiposa tunaketi katika matatu na tunasema nitaanza namna gani What is the problem? Ni shida iko wapi? You are sober. Wewe haujalewa. Mm. The problem is that you are sober. Shida ni haujalewa. How many people here a drunk man has entered the matatu and asked you a permission? Can I speak to you? <laughs> hmm? How many? Ni wangapi kati yetu mlevi aliingia kwa matatu iliyokuwa na Excuse me madam. Please give me ma- permission to speak to you akakuuliza ya kwamba ni ruhusu ni kuongelesha even before he sits hata kabla ya kuketi he will be speaking isn't it atakuwa amenena tell you people i'm by the i'm not drunk hmm? <laughs> anaambia watu mimi sijalewa hmm? i'm not drunk sijalewa kama then he sits on your chair na anaketi anakuketia he says me i'm a great man anaanza kuongea yeye ni mtu mkuu and you're wondering i don't know you na unasema mimi sijui yule But is that your problem or his problem? Na ye hiyo hmm? ni shida yake ama yako. Is that his problem or your problem? Je, ni shida yake ama yake? When you are drunk of the spirit, kama umelewa roho, you don't you don't look as man looketh. Hautazami chinzia mwanadamu. The Bible says we look at the outside appearance. Biblia inasema tunaangalia uonekano wa nje. This principle is going to help you in life. He itakusaidia maisha. No matter how beautiful they look, hata kama ni warembo na No matter how well dressed they are, hata kama wamevaa kitu. No matter how dignified they seem, hata kama ni waungwana na The problem of man is one. Shida ya mwanadamu ni moja. They all have a sin problem. Wao wana shida ya There's a vacuum in the heart of man that requires filling. Kuna nafasi ndani ya moyo wa mtu. So you have a solution. Na wewe unajibu. You know some of us just see a drunkard or a poor man you say he needs Jesus. Na sisi tunaona mtu mlevi ama mtu maskini na tunasema huyu And you see the other one with a V8 and a what and you're intimidated. Na unaona mwenye ana gari kubwa na wewe unatishu. Welcome. Please. Don't buy Don't bow at strange altars. Wewe usina. You are a minister of God. Wewe ni muhudumu. You are a deliverer of good news. Wewe ni mpeanaji wa habari njema don't be moved by what you see usishangazwe na mambo yenye unaona say i have come useme nimekuja and i have a message for you na nina ujumbe kwa ajili yako be drunk kunywa boldness ujaziri acts chapter 18 verse 1 
Matendo ya mitume 18 sura ya uh, mstari wa kwanza. Acts chapter 18 verse 1. After these things Paul departed and from Athens and went to Corinth. Baada ya mambo haya Paulo akateka akatoka Athens akienda Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila born in Pontus who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius, Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome and he came to them. Let's continue. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked for by occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. Are you seeing the word compelled? Does compel mean please? If you don't mind. If it's convenient to you, isn't it? <laughs> you know we have ministry of convenience today in church. Ujue kuna huduma ya convenience. Ya convenience wa Tanzania, pastor. Kitu kinachofaa kwa wakati. Ama madam unapokuwa na muda ama wakati wa kufanya kitu sio that i only serve when it's convenient ya kwamba nitafanya kazi kama ninajisikia so you fill your program with everything that is personal it's called your self development your growth your family or whatever then you look at the gaps that are there sasa unajaza nafasi zako na vitu zenye wewe unafikiria ni za muhimu na unaangalia So maybe you, you have mkono. one Saturday in April you say God so what would you like me to do for you on Sasa ukiwa April 15th chuma <laughs> moja pengine mwezi wa 4 unaangalia Mungu sasa hii nitaweza fanya nini that, that's, that's when my time table can allow Hapo ndipo nitakuwa bure And then maybe in July na pengine mwezi wa saba my program can I, can I can squeeze you there for some two minutes program yangu itaweza niruhusu kidogo and then maybe sundays uh, nikiangalia jumapili 1 hour 45 minutes there about pengine muda tu wa saa moja na dakika 45 hivi because i don't like this uh, long services mimi sipendi baada ndefu hivi because it's family time kwa sababu ni wakati wa jamii <laughs> But the spirit compelled Paul. Lakini roho alimsukuma Paulo. Testify. Akimwambia ya kwamba shiriki. So you'll be sitting at your workplace and saying testify now. Anaambia Paulo shiriki sana. You are seated at that board meeting and say testify. Unmeketi katika board meeting na nasema shiriki. Remember all of us are ambassadors. Kundua kila moja wetu We are only posted at different places to work. Tumepeanwa mahali tofauti tu. Some of us are posted here in church. Wengine tumeletwa kanisani. Some of you are posted in those companies. Wengine mmepelekwa kule katika kampuni fulani. You are an ambassador wherever you are. Wewe ni ambassador kule penye You are a minister at the bank. Wewe ni mhuduma katika benki. Mm? So you you can't come to church and wear a badge called volunteer. Hauwezi kuja kanisani na uvae badge ambayo imeandikwa. You volunteer at your workplace not here. He, here is your full time work. Now you are volunteering your services at your bank wewe, or at wherever you are working. Wewe umejipeana tu kufanya kazi kidogo kule kwa benki. But you can't come to church and say I'm vol- I'm, vol- <laughs> I'm volunteering. Then you say I am sacrificing for ministry. Na unasema mimi nimetoa mhanga nimechitoa mhanga kwa huduma. What would you be rather doing? Nini nyingine ungekuwa unataka kufanya? Now that you have sacrificed. Sasa it means ume sacrifice means you know have I, I opportunity cost means I have left something very important isn't it? Um, so that I can do this. Ina maanisha umeanza kitu chenye ni cha muhimu sana ndio ufanye hiki. You can't sacrifice to serve God. It's a privilege. Hauwezi kujitoa mhanga kumtumikia Mungu. Hiyo ni nafasi yenye umepewa. I have sacrificed my time. Mimi nimetoa mhanga t- uh, muda wangu. When did you have time? Wewe ulikuwa na muda siku gani? I thought time belongs to God. <laughs> Nilifikiria muda yote ni ya Mwenyezi. <laughs> so, mtu hawezi kuambia ati have sacrificed your money. No, it's not possible. 
mtu hawezi sema mimi so, nimejitoa you are, pesa. when you come to god and you are, you are offered a place of service you say thank you god for considering me to serve in your vineyard sasa ukija kanisani na upewe nafasi ya kuhudumu unashukuru mungu unasema asante kwa nafasi hii furusa now the spirit of god also Roho wa Mungu tena. Is what gives us confirmation as sons. Ndio pia anatuhakikishia kuwa wana. Romans 8:14 says as many as are led by the spirit they are the children of God. Warumi 8:14 inasema wote wenye wanaongozwa na roho wa Mungu ni wana wa Mungu. For the spirit that we have received is not unto bondage. Kwa sababu roho mwenye tumempokea sio wa kutufunga. But is the spirit of adoption lakini ni roho wa uana by whom we cry out abba father ambapo tunamlia abba baba for it is the spirit that testifies with our spirit that we are the children of god kwa sababu ni roho yule ambaye ana hakikisha ama anatupa ufahamu sisi ni wana wa He bears witness with our spirit ni mshahidi na roho zetu with our spirit that we are the children of god na roho zetu ya kwamba sisi ni wana wa your affirmation comes from god kule kudhibitishwa kunatoka kwa mungu Let me tell you something. Wacha niwaambie kitu. It is not the motivational seminars that you need for to 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 lift your self esteem. Sio hiyo uh, seminars za kutiwa moyo ndizo unahitaji ndiwe uinuliwe kiroho. You need a bath of the spirit. Unahitaji kusaliwa na roho. Because when he testifies with your spirit that you are son of God, you don't need anything else. Wakati, no other confirmation. Wakati anashuhudia na roho wako, hauhitaji mtu yoyote akushuhudie. But if you don't have lakini kama hauna you'll go from one meeting to another like we were told yesterday utaenda mkutano mmoja hadi nyingine kama vile tuliambiwa jana seven keys to boost your morale ili ukaweze kuinua hali yako seven ways to know who you are mara saba za kujua wewe ni nani how to understand self awareness kujua kujifahamu wewe ni nani how to boost your self esteem <laughs> kuweza kuinua hali yako ama hali yeah you know the, the, these seminars nowadays we have in churches eh ujue hizi seminar tuko nazo mpaka kanisani understand who you are <laughs> elewa wewe ni nani follow your heart fuata roho yako but the bible says the heart is desperately wicked so lakini biblia inasema mioyo yetu ni ovu kabisa he says be self aware inasema ya kwamba jifahamu but the bible says die to self so is a contradiction isn't it inasema kufa kibinafsi hmm? the one you are trying to revive the bible is trying to kill it hmm? chenye wewe unataka kufuvia ama kufuvua biblia inasema ua believe in your name amini jina lako and the bible says i no longer live biblia inasema mimi siishi tena says analyze your achievements uh, inasema ya kwamba hebu chunguza umepata and believe in yourself na ujiamini and the bible says all that i have done i consider done lakini biblia inasema chochote chenye nimefanya na hesabu kama mafi know your competencies inasema jua nguvu zako and the bible says he has chosen the foolish biblia inasema amechakuwa wapumbafu so is a contradiction sasa ni tofauti That's why this kingdom and that kingdom Sasa ufalme huu na ufalme ule mwingine The people could not understand Jesus Watu ambao hawakuelewa Yesu Completely Kabisa Because his kind of thinking was just not of this world Kwa sababu aina ya mafikiria yake ilikuwa tofauti mno na hapa ule This world will say if you are great you are competent and you are gifted you get a position Uh, hapa duniani ilikuwa ya kwamba kama wewe ni hodari una nguvu na umeelimika utapata nafasi Jesus comes and say if you are competent you are gifted and you are going high be a servant Na Biblia uh, Yesu Kristo anakuja anasema kama wewe utakuwa hodari upate cheo kuwa mtumishi Totally different tofauti kabisa but what confirms us sons lakini chenye kinatudhibitisha kama and removes every doubt na kutoa hofu yoyote the world says aim for self actualization ulimwengu unasema ya kwamba ebu angazia 
That is the epitome of success. And the Bible says you are only called to show forth his glory. God says you are called for God actualization. The world self says self actualization. Lakini ulimwengu unasema wewe unajitukuza huko juu. Totally diametrically op- opposite. Mambo tofauti kabisa. Sonship comes from the confirmation of the spirit. Uana unatoka kwa uthibitisho wa roho. Have you have you ever wondered those days of Peter and John and James and Thomas? Je, umeshawahi istajabu siku hizo za Petero, Yohana na Tomaso? The kind of seminars they used to have. Hmm? Can you imagine? Imagine scripture, eh? imagine. Like now they are seated like Sasa wamekiti. They are meeting on Saturday. Wanakutana Jumamosi to teach about uh, what what is your favorite wafunze kuhusu somo gani lako lenye unapenda maybe self awareness ama kujitambua to know who you are kujua wewe ni nani like you are black or dark kwamba wewe ama wewe ni mweusi oh no it's ni... emotional intelligence <laughs> to know how your emotions function Is, and also to understand the emotion of others. <laughs> God, God has given us what we call discernment, isn't it? Now imagine Thomas, the doubter, isn't it? What kind of seminar would you propose to Thomas for Thomas to go? Sasa utaleta seminar aina gani kwa mtu Thomas wa mwenye? I'll see when I uh, um, I'll believe when I see. You, you know he was a visual learner. He was a visual learner. Yeye alikuwa mwanafunzi wa kuona. He was not audio. He was not just hearing. He, Yeye he, ha, he, for Thomas you had to use a lot of teaching aids. <laughs> Yeye ungetumia mifano hmm? mingi. <laughs> you say this <laughs> is inaonekana. This is anointing oil. Ukimwambia hii ni mafuta. Thomas what do you see? Thomas unaona nini? Hmm? Yeah? I see, I, you see a bottle. chupa. You see the, there is a man who wanted to impress the neighbors like we always do. Kuna mtu alikuwa anataka afurahishe majirani vile. So he took a pencil and, 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 and placed it on the table. Alichukua kalamu na akaweka katika meza. And he said son this is called uh, perpendicular na akamwambia kwamba hii inaitwa kuelekea juu. Perpendicular is 90 degrees, isn't it? Kuelekea juu ni Anyway, for those who did uh, mathematics for a while. I know some of you dropped without telling the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so this is perpendicular. Hii inaelekea juu. So he repeated it so many times. Akaweza kusema mambo kwa Until every time he was asking the son what is this? Akiuliza mwana anasema hii ni nini? Say dad. That is perpendicular. Akisema baba hiyo ni perpendicular. So the the neighbors came, the friends came. Sasa marafiki wakaja. The problem is that he didn't have the pencil. Ah shida ni ya kwamba hakuwa na penseli. So he took a ruler. Sasa akachukua ruler. And he put it there. Na akaweka pale. Say what is this? Akasema mwana hii ni nini? Say dad that is a ruler. Ba mtoto akasema hiyo ni ruler. Say we talked about this. What is this? Baba anasema tuliongea mambo haya hii ni nini? Says dad, it is a ruler. Mwana anasema hiyo ni ruler. And he gets angry like you usually do when you want to impress your, you know, the friends who have come. Now, akakasirika kama vile tunataka kufurahisha marafiki. You see the problem of the son is that he didn't understand the concept. Unaona shida ya mwana He thought that if you put a, a pencil on a table it's called perpendicular. Hakujua ya kwamba uh, ukiweka kalamu kwa meza itakuwa imesimama. He didn't understand that the concept is that if anything meets at 90 degrees that is perpendicular isn't it? Siri hakuelewa ukiweka chochote kikisimama itakuwa And so many of us na wengi wetu are seeing the 
things happening around us in church. But we don't understand the concept. The concept comes from the teaching of the Holy Spirit. Psalms 103 verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. His ways were known by Moses. Moses knew the secret. Because once you understand that concept, you are able to replicate that concept in every problem. But his acts, the children of Israel were just getting manna, they didn't know how, why, whatever. That's why they were all, always angry. Anyway, hungry and angry. Because a hungry man is an angry man. But they didn't know why. It's only Moses who understood how. The Spirit of God confirms to us sonship. The Spirit of God also confers to us the ministry. Acts 13 verse 2. That after they had prayed and fasted. The Spirit says, now separate to me. Roho akasema, ni weke wakfu. For the work that I've called them. Kwa kazi yenye ni mewaitia. Who separated you for ministry? Ni nani mwenye alikutenga kwa ajili ya huduma? You see, let me tell you. Wacha ni kuambie. There's a shift in paradigm. Kuna kule kutoweka. In thinking. Katika mawazo. When you think a department leader has called you. And if God has called you, it changes the way you serve. Because when you think your departmental leader has called you, you are going only to serve when he's there. Or just to do a bare minimum to please him. But when you think God has called you, you are going to do far much beyond what your leader is telling you. And when he is absent, you will not also be absent. That's why sometimes. If, if you lead a church, it's very good to travel. You disappear for several months. And you call back and ask who was there. The people who miss to come when you are not there are not your supporters. Don't, don't think that they love you so much. Because <laughs> no. if somebody loves you, he should even be more when you are not there because he wants to take care of the things you are taking care of. Paul was writing to the Roman. He says, you are diligent. When I was with you, but even much more in my absence. Because when you are absent, they should come early and ask. Now that our father is not in, why, what can we do to make it successful? But they come back and tell you while you are away. I also disappeared. Because you know it is you I respect. Somebody who respects you will take care of what you have. Hmm? Do you know how emotional it is you come home in the evening and find that it, it is still where you left it? Hey, can you say my servant you really love me? 
utasema mtumishi wangu ulinipenda sana and if you are like my grandmother na kama utakuwa kama mama yangu by the time she comes back and steps at the gate atakapokuja na simame katika gate she always looked at the animals ataangalia wanyama wake say awajashiba na anasema i don't know how she knew she just anajuaje <laughs> you know discernment eh pengine ana kupambanua she just looks and say anaangalia na anasema awajashiba wao hawajashiba they are not satisfied and when she mentions that na anaposema hivyo you start praying for endurance and <laughs> unaomba perseverance <fumilia>. because <laughs> in the next few hours kwa sababu muda mchache ambao whatever is going to land on you chenye kitakuangukia including you don't provoke your stomach gastric juices because there is nothing that is going to go there <laughs> hata mm. usilete hamu ya kula kitu kwa sababu hakuna kitakacho Because she wants you to understand what starvation means. Kwa sababu anataka ufahamu njani nini. Next time she leaves you animals. Wakati mwingine atakakukupa mifuko zake. She's going to get them like this. Atapata imejaa. Because you understand what food does to a living thing. Kwa sababu unaelewa chakula ni muhimu namna gani kwa kitu kilicho hai. The spirit of God Roho wa Mungu gets us to ministry. In anatusaidia kuhudumu. The spirit of God is upon me. Roho wa Mungu aju juu yangu. Luke 4:18 for he has anointed me. Luka 4:18 kwa sababu amenitia mafuta. It is him who has anointed me for gifts for Ni, ministry. Ni yeye amenitia mafuta kwa huduma. He uses a man. Anatumia mtu. But is the spirit. Lakini yeye ni roho. I long to come to you so that I may impart spiritual gifts. Ni takuja kwako ili ni kutie gharama za roho. It does not only impart ministry to you. Ha kutii tu huduma kwako. He also brings you gifts. Anakuletea gharama. Equipping you to serve. Akaweze kukutia nguvu utumike. Romans 12 verse 8. Warumi 12:8. There are different gifts all by the same spirit. Kuna gharama tofauti lakini zatoka kwa roho. Either exhortation from verse 6 okay. Romans 12 from verse 6 to 8 sita mpaka nane. all those gifts given to God zote. whether it's prophecy whether it's Ata faith whatever gives you gifts so that he can nani. equip you ni kukutia wewe nguvu 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8 wa Korintho wa kwanza 12 mstari wa 8 they are called the gifts of the spirit zinaitwa gharama za roho whether is word of knowledge iwe neno la hekima whether the word of wisdom uh, neno la maarifa neno la hekima given by the spirit zinapatiwa na roho 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28 wa Korintho wa kwanza 12 28 whether is prophecy kama ni kutabiri or teaching ama kufunza or gifts of healings ama given by the spirit zinapatiwa na roho Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 wa Efeso 4:11 whether is the apostolic the prophetic kama ni mitume whether is the pastor teacher kama walimu whether is the evangelist wachungaji wa injilisti score for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edification of the body of Christ wafunze watakatifu kwa ajili ya kazi ya huduma he says until we come to the unity of the faith ili tuje katika umoja wa imani and of the knowledge of the son of god na maarifa ya mwana wa mungu to the perfect measure of the perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ tufikie kimo cha yesu kristo so is the spirit that bequeaths ni roho gifts. ambaye anatupa gharama you don't imitate wewe hauigi Mm-mm, the spirit gives as he wills ni roho anatupa vile anapenda he distributes anatupatia he does not just come alone ha, aji, when he comes he comes bearing gifts anapokuja um, ana gharama it's not only the gifts that he brings sio tu gharama ambazo analeta he also gives birth inside of you what we call the fruit of the spirit pia anazalisha ndani mwako tunda la roho galatians 5 verse 22 wakalathia 5:22 for you to manifest or exhibit the fruit of the spirit kwako wewe kudhihirisha tunda la roho it is new no you are not struggling you say this day i'm going to persevere no wewe haungangani ya kwamba leo nitafumilia Have you ever promised? Je, umeshawahi aidi mtu? I'm going to be patient. Mimi nitakuwa wasubira. And remember every word you say. 
na kumbuka kila neno nalo sema God sends a test to test that word Mungu anatuma jaribio The Bible says kujaribio. the word tested Joseph the word Biblia inasema neno lilimjaribu Joseph You see Yusufu. Joseph problem was where Ujue shida ya Joseph ilikuwa nini When he says I have a dream Alisema mimi nina ndoto Because the word of God must be tested Sasa neno la Mungu lazima lijaribiwe So today you say I'm going to be patient na wewe unasema leo nitakuwa wasubira. Imagine the first problem you have at 8 o'clock is what? Na jaribio la kwanza asubuhi saa mbili ni nini? The test of patience. Jaribio la kusubira. I remember a story I, I saw somewhere of this guy who was at the interviews. Ninakumbuka habari ya mjama fulani alikuwa katika And he was there being interviewed alikuwa anahojiwa kupata kazi. very kind person. Akasema mimi ni mtu mwenye ngari. God ngarimu. has helped me I don't get angry. Mungu amenisaidia sikasiriki haraka. So this interview was asking me so you say you cannot get angry. Sasa huyu mwenye alikuwa anamhoja anasema umesema hauwezi kasiriki haraka. But all that life in your, the course of your life when did this uh, happen? Na akasema file umeishi ilianzia wapi So today what do you do not to get angry Sasa unafanya nini ndipo usikasirike So you've said completely you can't get angry e, Umesema hawezi kasirika kama Let me hear you correctly you're saying you cannot ang- get angry no matter what Oh je wacha nisikie vema umesema hawezi kasirika Whether your wife talks to you Hata kama or... mke wako atakuongelea So you cannot get angry Hawezi kasirika So the first word you said is that you cannot take, get angry uh, Neno la kwanza ulilosema ulisema And hawezi. say I have told you I can <laughs> <He> said, <yeah. laughs> What is wrong with you? Wewe shida gani unayo? That does that sound like somebody who does not get angry. Nje hiyo ni ya mtu mwenye hawezi kasirika. So, sasa do not trust in the arm of flesh. Usi uh, usiweze kutumainia nguvu za kimwili Let the spirit of God work inside of you Wacha roho wa Mungu atende kazi ndani mwako To produce the fruit Alete tunda mm. It is religion that that makes people repeat eh? You know religion you know Ni dini ambayo inafanya watu wa You know these things that we teach usually what you confess is what you possess Hizi vitu zenye tunakufunza ya kwamba chenye unakiri ndicho unapata Is not true until sio kweli mpaka is the spirit confessing inside of you ni roho ambaye anakiri ndani mwako is not just positive thinking sio tu because that's another religion today sio tu kufikiria just, vema just think positively fikiria or just, vema or just confess positively e, ungama vema you know goliath was a positive thinker ujue goliath alikuwa mtu mwenye anaungama vema and he confessed positively na yeye alisema mambo vema did you know that Unajua hivyo? Says I'm going to feed your flesh to the fowls. Anaambia Daudi ya kwamba nitapatia mwili wako siku ya leo uh, ndeke wangai. See that was positive confession. Sio ni kuungama. But what was the difference kwe. between David and Goliath? Lakini utofauti ilikuwa kati gani ya Daudi na Goliath? Because David says I do not come to you. Daudi anasema siji kwako. With these things you are saying. Na vitu zenye unaona. I come in the name of the Lord. Na kuja kwa jina la Bwana. The person working in me both will and to do is the spirit. Mtu mwenye anafanya kazi ndani mwangu ni roho. Because today even multi level marketing are doing that every morning. You go for the training in the morning. Kwa sababu kama unafanya kazi ya biashara unaenda asubuhi. And then they charge you. Na wanakutia nguvu. Say you are a believer. Unasema kuwa mtu. Say you can make it. Mumini, uta- Say you are going to sell it. Wewe hauta- Sell you are going to what? Wewe utafanya A B C D. You chant for 10 minutes. Wewe unasema mambo hayo hayo. When you leave that room you believe you can do it. Na unatoka katika jumba hilo unasema mimi ninaweza. Hey, you see confession does not replace your obedience to the spirit. Ujue kule kuungama hakubadilishani na kutii kwako katika roho. You are given by uh, as a gift. Umepatiwa kama gharama. But over time you produce the fruit. Lakini kwa muda utatoa matunda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to read this verse 1 Corinthians 12:13. Wa Korintho wa kwanza 12 mstari wa 13 Very interesting 
very interesting. Sana. It's talking about church membership. What is your induction like? Since for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink in one spirit. See, this is how people are enrolled into the family of God. You are baptized into the body by one spirit. And then you are made to drink into one spirit. So citizenship is in, into the kingdom is by drinking into one spirit. But the problem is Shidani. you've just people you know who have stayed. Peter said that they were among us but they were not of us. You know. Uh, Do you know people, there are people who have stayed with us for a long time. They have our culture they have our style but their lives have not been transformed by the spirit they have just stayed in that church for 10 years they just know at a certain point you say glory because they copy the style of the church but they don't they are not transformed yet even our prayers they have just copied because they just listened Father God dear Lord I come to you Father God dear Lord I'm sorry Father Lord dear God I come to you Father Lord dear God you know? he also doesn't understand what he's saying but th that is what we've been saying so he's just he's just copying <laughs> I wish we sought to be baptized into one body where the church is moving to right now wakati kanisa inaenda where we are going is not just hunger for membership. We learned yesterday is about sons of the kingdom. People who have been baptized by the spirit and who are drinking into one spirit. You see, if we gather in church today and we are speaking from different worlds. We can't understand each other. Because you've just carried your world, you've come. And this pastor is standing here saying, I can see God. What God is revealing to us is awesome. And you're asking, Pastor, be realistic. You see? Some of us think that the spirit is not real. It is what we see that is real. We must all come together where we are drinking from one spirit. So that we understand each other. You know when Jesus was talking about his kingdom, Peter and the team were not able to get it. They're thinking, let's just follow this guy. There's a lot of reputation, he's doing great things. And our movement is getting bigger. And then one day they come. And they say they want to make him king. And then Jesus disappears. The disciples must have sat somewhere and wondered. You know, what is wrong with this guy? Because I would have gotten like the prime minister position. Mimi ningekuwa kama prime minister ama waziri mkuu ama 
But it's passing on opportunities that people spend lifetime to look for them, isn't it? Look at their mentality. They are preaching to a multitude. And, and they tell Jesus, these people, uh, we are getting a lot of um, uh, acceptance here. Let's build a church and stay here. We can develop structures and systems. These, these are a lot of people. You know, we've been struggling with two people, three people. <laughs> but now there is a multitude. Jesus says we must move on. He was wondering, what is... I thought now we are making progress. And he looked at himself as one of the chief elders, you know. And then, and then he, Jesus disappears. He says, we must go to another city. Are you seeing the change of mindset? They were in a, they were in a different plane altogether. They only started to understand him. The Bible says, for he was speaking of the Holy Spirit that they would receive because he had not been glorified. When the Spirit came upon them, it was now Peter who was going from place to place. He was not judging his success according to what people think. Because if our rating of success is what we think, then Jesus must have left a total failure. He left people who are not sure of themselves. He didn't leave a building. He didn't leave a name. He left nothing. In, in fact, there was no inheritance. Because even the treasurer had killed himself. Hmm? He didn't have a congregation. And to make it worse, he had died prematurely. You know, this day, we say, by fire, by force, against premature death, <laughs> not my portion. Why do you want a hundred years? To do what? Kusumbua pastor vile unamusumbua sahi. Unataka a hundred years kusumbua pastor vile unamusumbua sahi. No, no. Ask for a rich life. Ask for a rich life. God, if I live for 20 years, make it count. Let me live significance on the first of the earth. You are not just an existence. And there is forerunner, the prophet who came to announce his coming. Na yule mwenye alikuja kuelezea kuja kwa Yesu was done what yeye naye akachinjwa mm. imagine hebu <laughs> fikiria tu and Jesus you know didn't attend the funeral hata Yesu hakuenda mazishi the bible yake. says he left to another city alitoroka akaenda mji mwingine <laughs> but what happens if the pastor did that today Lakini that kama, you have a funeral and he hasn't come kama mchungaji atafanya hivyo ati it's not the pastor that leads to another city. It is you now that leads to another congregation. And Paul didn't preach for long. Did you know that? But he says in three and a half years he had reached the whole of Asia. The problem is that you have not reached even your own building. And you are man of God, lay your hands on me. The gift of long life. <laughs> Do you know it is not good to live beyond your purpose? 
The Bible says David fulfilled his purpose in his generation and he rested. Once you fulfill your purpose, you don't shy away from resting. Because now you are going to do funny things. Mm. You are going to be a burden. I know we preach about uh, Ezekiah. Was it Ezekiah? Then you can pray like Ezekiah. Turn against the wall and say, Lord, remember. The years were But let me ask you. How did Ezekiah die? I wish he never prayed for the 15 years. I, I wish he just agreed to die. Because he now destroyed everything he had tried to do. Eh? <laughs> even food they tell us, food, even food they tell us, you are supposed to stop eating while you still like the food. Don't feel like you eat until you can't breathe. <laughs> because if you leave it like it is still sweet, it, that memory stays with you, isn't it? You still, desire, you still, you still want to eat, isn't it? But not like boys in our village. They eat ugali until they can't breathe. <laughs> And then they, they tell you in the, in the community you take a broom and start hitting the, the, the tummy. Biologically it doesn't work, yeah? But, but psychologically miracles happen. Come on, celebrate Jesus. To pick him a coffee, Mazuri, to Mshangili, Bwana, Sababu, Reverend Francis. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Francis. The Lord bless you and replenish your energy in Jesus' name.